Hey everybody, how's it going out there? This is Wednesday night happy hour and this is If You Drink on Vet Radio Syndicate. I am your host, Heather Clark, and this week was the week we were supposed to have a guest, but as life goes, sometimes it doesn't always work out and they're not always able to make it. So I'm kind of hanging out by myself tonight and I need some company. So if anybody's out there watching, please feel free to jump on and uh, keep me company. Have a drink with me tonight. I'm going to post the uh, link in the comment section so that you can jump on. That link is now live in multiple places, so you can jump on and have a drink with me tonight and talk about whatever you feel like, because not having a, a guest or agenda, I, I'm really footloose and fancy free tonight. Um, as you can see, it's a little bit dark behind me. As many of you know, I've been traveling the country. I'm finally in Florida. I'm just north of uh, Tampa Bay. I'm in my RV. Adjusting to life in RV has been interesting to say the least. I took the first couple of days and hung out, you know, by the beach, uh, hung out by the lake because I'm in a really cool RV park called Three Lakes. And I just been chilling out and uh, relaxing, which I really needed. But now reality is kind of setting in. Although I, I love the simplicity of RV life, um, you know, less cleaning, don't have to take care of a yard, uh, a lot less to do. There are many different things you don't think about living in an RV. And because I was on a permanent lot, I just assumed that it was going to be like living in a house. And I really didn't have to do anything, but uh, I was wrong. <laughs> so when the guys delivered the trailer, I, I picked it up in Mississippi and uh, spent time in it actually in Mississippi with this amazing family that just like took me in and fed me and housed me for a couple of days. And it was wonderful being on their 63 acre farm. Um, the guys that transported it down were kind of trying to show me some stuff. And I was like, you know what? I really have no idea what the hell you're even talking about. He's like, well, <laughs> you better get savvy because you're going to have to do this stuff. I was like, okay, so I'm not going to have a choice. And then the RV company actually came to do some work on it. And, uh, that was a little pricey <laughs> to say, but they, they were pretty cool too. They kind of explained a lot of different things and it's just stuff you don't realize is, and it's not too terribly hard. It's not that I can't do it. It's just that I wasn't expecting to do it, but, uh, yeah, so far, you know, everybody's really cool here. Everybody's real nice. Uh, it's just an easygoing life here. I, I love being back by the ocean, you know, even though I'm not right at the beach, I'm like literally 10 minutes from the beach, uh, 15 minutes from a great little village called Port Ritchie. We can go hang out and have seafood and listen to music and it's been really, really relaxing. Hey, Brian. Hey, Lee, how's it going, you guys? So tonight, I was going to have a special drink since I was in Florida, but trying to move and make like, I don't know, like a hundred different trips to Walmart because you always forget something when you're moving and you forget, oh shit, I don't have that anymore. I don't have that. I literally came with the stuff in my truck. I, I have some stuff in a storage shed in another state, but I had like nothing. <laughs> so I've made a million trips to Walmart and Lowe's and Home Depot and stuff. I'm still not done. And my trailer is still rocking. I, I, I got to get it leveled out and trying to figure that out as well. So I'm drinking and because I don't have any wine glasses. I'm drinking in my coffee cup. I'm drinking red wine. Um, drinking red wine tonight because in Florida it's hot as hell, you know, and it's humid and you always want to uh, eat light and eat fresh and cold stuff. And something that I really love to eat that my kids love to eat is something called the Mediterranean diet. And it is basically eating all the foods that they do the most in the Mediterranean, olives, hummus, um, all the different uh, cheeses and, and meats and stuff. And actually the the owner of the radio station of Bet Radio, Bet radio Syndicate, if I can get that out tonight, um, George is actually from Greece, like born in Greece, was there while he was a kid, immigrated to America. So he also, you know, eats the Mediterranean diet. It's actually very healthy for you. <laughs> Of course, in moderation with some of that stuff, but the oils in it, uh, red wine is part of the diet, if you can believe that. It, it's totally in the diet. Whiskey and diet in Arizona, hot as hell. <laughs> Brad, I was just there. I was just in Phoenix teaching. I thought I was going to melt. It was miserable. 
I was like, I don't know how people live in Phoenix. Like I lived in Albuquerque and that was hot, but I'm like, this is, it's like 117 degrees. Um, outside of Phoenix, I got caught in a two hour traffic jam. No, it was on my way into Phoenix, actually two hour traffic jam, like in the middle of California. It, it was, in, it was insane. Yeah. Monsoon season. Yep. They have that in Albuquerque too. And man, you better watch out because that rain will come down so hard in 15 minutes. Like it'll sweep you away. Yeah. Humidity is really, really high here today. Like really high and sticky and yucky. And um, actually my neighbor, he, uh, their son had just gone to basic training and he came home on leave. He was going on a back road when a monsoon hit and the road literally went out from under him and he broke his back and he, he couldn't go back in the army. So it's very dangerous. I've actually been on top of mountaintops in Southern New Mexico. Um, I used to work for US Fish and Wildlife and uh, we were uh, chasing down baby eagles to tag them with GPS trackers. And we're on top of the mountain, we're almost done. And some biologists at the bottom of the mountain were like, hey, get off the mountain now because there's like a tornado warning and a storm is coming. And this is a mountain that there was no flat pass on whatsoever. It was like the biggest boulders I've ever seen. You had to transverse the entire way up to the very top of this mountain because the eagles were roosting in, on top of these trees right by the cliffs. And so trying to get down from that in rain, raining sideways, literally, you couldn't see, we literally had to slide our way down the mountain. It was crazy. We get down the mountain. Again, it's raining so hard. We have no idea where any of the trucks are or any of the other biologists. And thank God we found them. And I don't think I've ever been so cold in my life, even in combat training. You know, they say, if it ain't raining, you ain't training. Well, that was an experience like I've never had. I, I was so cold. And by the time we got in the truck, I sat down and just like a pool of water came out of uh, my clothes. That was the uh, best day of my life. Uh, holding and tagging baby eagles were also one of the most miserable and cold. And I don't think I've ever been that tired my whole life. Bradley says, can you give a bio synopsis for those of you that don't, you know, of course. So I've been doing this show for a couple of months. Um, I had another podcast uh, before this. My name is, is Heather Clark. I'm a Navy vet. I was also a military spouse. Um, I was an ombudsman for a couple of different commands. So I lived the military life for a huge chunk of my adult life. And I, I miss it dearly. I didn't want to get out circumstances, you know, with family and stuff. I just couldn't deploy with three kids, raising them on my own. So um, unfortunately, I had to get out. But it was one of the best decisions in my life. And I lost my veteran community for about a decade. Over the last year, I started attending something called Irreverent Warrior Hikes, where we go out to different cities and we hike in silkies and hike with flags. And it's basically suicide prevention. And that really, that and, you know, me getting trained in trauma yoga for vets and everything like that and traveling across the country, that really saves me. And I wanted to continue in another platform to do suicide prevention. So that's when we came up with the idea. I was approached to do a podcast for Vet Radio Syndicate. And I said, well, if I'm going to do one, you know, why don't we call it If You Drink? Because my friend Chris Turner had a hit song, If You Drink, a couple years ago. He's a country music star. And it was about, if you're a vet, like, don't drink by yourself. Find your brother or sister. Um, come have a drink with them. Don't deal with all these demons and this darkness that you have by yourself. So that's what this podcast is. You know, we have guests on, but we also have it so that, yeah, it's a great song. I, I love it. I love the video. I love the whole thing. And, and Chris is one of uh, my best friends. He's a great guy. And um, that's where we came up with the podcast. So anybody wants to jump on, that's why we're here. You can jump on live with me. Don't be shy. But, but we're here to, to chat, to, to hang out, to hang out with another vet because uh, we've been through the suck together. We, we know all the old stories about training and, and, and duty and just bullshit that you got to deal with in the military, but it's bullshit that you still love and that you remember your whole life. And so that's, that's pretty much why we're here. And uh, Chris was actually on a couple weeks ago when we had a time for uh, vets to jump on and uh, CJ Thomas actually jumped on with us and we had 
we had such a good talk that we actually talked for like an hour after the show ended. So a lot of times guests will come on and the show won't end once I hit end broadcast. We'll continue talking. And so my, my academic background is in um, psych and public health, you know, so I do know a little bit what I'm talking about, kind of. So, you know, you know that's why I'm here is just to talk. Um, no judgments, no nothing. You want to talk about your day. You want to talk about a nonprofit that, you know, you're involved with. You have questions for me. You guys can jump on and, and, and ask a question. I'm a pretty open person. And um, my, my passion really is to, to help vets. And I have a company called America Flix, which um, I created a specialized military program for veterans and first responders. And I, I teach it in a way that's uh, a soldier mindset and not a civilian mindset. And so that's what I'm trying to get incorporated into the VA programs is that, yeah, they offer yoga and holistic care at a couple, you know, here and there, hospitals and clinics, but it's not in a way that vets really want to partake in it and it's not engaging them and it's never at times that they can actually make it. So that's kind of my goal. I'm starting a research study with uh, Fort Invictus in Texas. Um, I'll have my own research assistants and facilities and access to special forces and active duty. And uh, we're going to do research study that we're going to then present to the VA on how they can um, create programs that are effective that are actually going to help soldiers. Bradley, because he's my brother, that brother brings tears to my eyes every day. Yeah, he is. He's an awesome, awesome, awesome guy. Love him to death. He's, he's doing great stuff, too. He's continued his mission through something called the Freedom Tour. They go out to VFWs, and Chris's band is kind of the hook to get people in the door. But while they're there, they take that opportunity for uh, Pastor Bob um, of Crosswinds Foundation to get two leaders in every VFW to learn this curriculum. Um, this curriculum is to help families and vets with PTSD and moral injury. And the way that they got the content for that curriculum was pretty interesting, actually. Uh, Pastor Bob has actually done a couple of documentaries. Um, he didn't feel like he could charge for them. And so he gave them out free. And he said, you know, I want to do something with this content that, that we've gathered through these documentaries. Let's put it into a curriculum. So he took all these interviews that he had with veterans and all this information that he got. And they created this curriculum. But the best part of it, there's a vet side and a family side. Because we know that when we're not doing good, it's not just affecting us. It's also affecting our families. You know, and if we're doing well, then that means our family is also doing well. And they're, we're doing better as a whole. And I think that that's really important. And that's what makes that project very, very unique. And actually this weekend, uh, Chris is playing in Maconda, Illinois at Project Die Hard. That is an event that several of my friends are putting on. Uh, Mark Peterson from uh, Patriots Project, uh, Brian Gibson, starting Fob Rush. Um, basically, it's a place for veterans to come and chill out and hang out. Like, no real expectation of what you have to do there. You just come there and hang out. So Project Die Hard this week in Maconda, Illinois, um, is to raise money in order to um, open up Fob Brush. I believe they have the building. I think they just um, need funds basically to, to get it started and for operation. And, and that's one of those places that a lot of resources maybe aren't. Uh, Brian was on last week talking about it. There are a lot of rural areas in the, in the country that vets just don't have access to cool stuff um, that they can do. That's what's great about Vet Radio, because Vet Radio Syndicate um, is you can hop on here and chat with a bunch of different veterans on a bunch of different topics. You know, we have comedy shows, we have financial shows, we have veteran resource shows, we have bullshit shows. Um, we have this show, you know, about mental health and suicide prevention and just conversation. Brad says, I've been out 17 years and still have issues that affect my wife. Family members are the true warriors. I absolutely, hey, Jean, how's it going? I absolutely believe that. And in fact, something that Pastor Bob said to me really stood out to me is somebody's wife, and I'm, I'll find the documentary, actually. I can't remember what it's called now. <laughs> I should know this. 
Um, but we'll talk about it maybe next week. Um, so, and maybe we could even do a screening of that. That's a really good idea. So from this documentary, someone's wife watched this with their husband. And after they were done watching it, the wife said, she turned to her husband and she said, now I get it. So that's a pretty powerful statement because families don't always understand what we're going through. In fact, my own children had no idea what I was going through. They're like, we didn't know any of that. You had any of those disabilities. We didn't know any of that stuff. Like, I'm like, because I hid it from you. That's, that's what we do to protect our families. But really, um, it's not helping us to do that. Yeah, Jason, uh, you know, I think a lot of us do that. I've had my own issues back and forth, you know, where I party pretty hard and then I kind of mellow out literally for years. And well, I'm glad that she stepped in, Jason. That's, you know, that's what we need. We need people to step in because because we're not alone. You know, the show is not you're not alone. You, you have a whole vet radio syndicate family here. There's so many resources and organizations that we can hook you up with. Um, to help you get over that stuff. That is all of our goals is to find some kind of platform and avenue to help you guys out. Even if it's just getting through the night, um, you know, until we could get you long-term resources, that's absolutely what we're here for. But um, substance abuse is, it's a Band-Aid. Um, you know, it's a lot of people think it's a depressant, so it's gonna make you feel even lower, even though it should, you know, you would think it would chill you out. It just, it does make the problems worse. Um, it affects your brain activity um, coupled with your other stuff that's going on in your brain. So it's definitely disease, um, definitely something that you really need to, well, you know, not having been one, you know, a real problem with it. I can't really speak to it personally, but I can speak to it from personal experience for myself. They have found that military children actually have a higher rate of addiction. And yes, criminal behavior does go along with substance abuse because you're not thinking in your right mind, you're not yourself. And when I came back from Afghanistan, my sweet little boy started getting into trouble. Started hanging out with gang members, um, started smoking first pot, then started selling pot, got kicked out of high school, um, had all kinds of issues. And he was doing a lot more drugs than I had any idea. And it wasn't until he had overdosed that um, I really understood all the stuff that he had been doing. And it really tore our family apart. I, I was really at my wits end. I love this child more than life itself. And I hate to say that I have a favorite child, but I was very, very close with my son. And it just tore me up to see that. Yes, uh, you know, it, it, is, it is genetic. Uh, my other girl, my girls, don't have that issue, but he definitely did. His dad was an alcoholic and still is. And a lot of his uncles and stuff on that side are alcoholics. So it definitely is a predisposition. It's, it's something that you're born with, but it's something that you can overcome as well because he did. And I'm so freaking proud of that kid. He really pulled himself out of it um, after he had a pretty bad scare with the overdose. He started to straighten out his life. It still took him a little bit to to get over stuff but he really turned his life around he has an amazing job right now he's 24 um but man it's about a seven years of hell our family got put through i mean we couldn't leave money out at all he would take it i'm pretty sure he robbed our house at one point you know um kids are resilient they, they are resilient for sure i know mine are i put them through hell and i feel guilty as hell um still for the, some of the stuff that I put him through for the terrible decisions I made because I was suffering myself and I was not making good decisions about the people that I was bringing into mind or their life. Um, I was working myself to death, which is a trauma response to basically it's a high, I'm a high functioning depressant. So I would be working full time, going to school, you know, 4.3 GPA top of my university and raising three kids by myself. And so that's how I was dealing with my trauma is basically if I keep myself so busy, I don't have to think about it. And I have friends that are addicts, recovering addicts that are involved in so many things. I get worried that they're going to have a heart attack. 
and they have to do it so that they're not thinking about doing something that they shouldn't. Jason is saying, CPS made me leave the house using my PTSD against me and try to take my babies and it broke me. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. PTSD, it should never ever be used against you and I've seen it used against vets and I think it's bullshit. First of all, we served our country and we sacrificed our body and now we're sacrificing our minds for the shit that we had to do for our country. And that should never ever be used against you. Just like really drug addiction, I don't think should be used against you. In other countries, they treat you. They don't throw you in jail. If you get in trouble with drugs, they put you into a rehabilitation center. It's completely paid for. They don't put you in prison for it because they recognize it's a disease um, that they need to treat. And PTSD is the same way. This is not something that we asked for when we served, not something we expected. And um, it's something that should be looked at as we need to treat this. And we're going to work with your treatment in order to get you into the situation where you can be with your family. Yeah, you know, I don't know why they're allowed to use that against you. I, I think that kind of differs from, from place to place, honestly, but it definitely is something that needs to be considered for veterans. You know, I know they have veterans court and stuff where you can get advocates and stuff to stand up for you. I don't think a lot of people understand what PTSD is. I, I, I really don't. And, you know, a blog that I just wrote for my company, America Flex, one of the first blogs was called The Saint Your Wife's Yoga, you know, where I was kind of trying to explain why we get PTSD. And when you look at the new medical criteria for PTSD, if you've experienced any of the six traumas that they listed, which some of them are like you went through a natural disaster or you were sexually abused or you were in a car accident. If you had experienced any of those six, then, and you were a soldier, you were likely to have chronic PTSD. And when we look at when we're going to war, we are having a perfectly normal reaction. PTSD is a normal reaction to an abnormal circumstance because by the means of evolution, we are not programmed to kill as human beings. We don't need to. We are the higher species. We don't need to kill to survive. So when you're thrown into a situation where you do have to um, make that choice, where you do have to, you know, shoot somebody or kill somebody to save yourself or save the person next to you or to save your country, um, when you're in a combat zone and your mechanisms for dealing with situations um, to get out of a situation like depression, anxiety, stress, all natural, but they're supposed to be turned on for a short amount of time get you through the situation, then they turn off. Combat, all the way up, 24 seven, months and months and months and months. They become damaged. And so our nervous systems, when we get back from combat, are freaking frayed, frazzled. But um, that's why people like don't understand because they've, they've never experienced it and they don't understand the science behind it. And there definitely is science. There's definitely medical reasons. Um, so because it's medical reasons, it should not be used against you. But, you know, it's, it's just a sad thing, that an unfortunate thing that it is. And that um, a lot of people just don't, don't get it. That's why it's good for vets to speak to other vets because we, we get it. We go through the same shit. Um, not all of us the same way. Everybody deals with stuff differently, but what I can tell you is that there's hope. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. There is a way to change your life. There are different ways to do that. The way that I do it, the way that I help vets is through conversation and through trauma yoga. Yoga saves my life. I'm no longer on any medications. The VA had me on a shitload of medications that made me a zombie. I'm no longer on medications. A lot of the injuries that I have, that I was in constant pain. A lot of them, uh, the pain is diminished so much that I barely notice it if I keep up with my practice. And there are ways to overcome these things and there are resources 
um, that are out there to help you. So don't ever feel like you're alone. Hey, thanks, Brad. I appreciate that. You know, yeah, we're always here. And if you guys need to talk offline too, we can do that as well. Depending on your um, diagnosis, like I would say um, I had a partner that had pretty severe bipolarism as a result of PTSD. He was special forces and just some of the shit that he had to do, uh, even though they're a little bit more resilient, uh, really messed him up. Something like that is an actual medical diagnosis that does need medication. Um, but things like PTSD, depression, anxiety, those are things that you can fix in a holistic way with holistic health care. <clears throat> <laughs> don't ever call me officer actually it's really funny somebody called me guru uh i just recently became a part of the hollywood american legion i was inducted a couple weeks ago and uh the vice commander came up he's like so should we call you guru after i got done teaching and he's like i was like don't call me guru i work for a living <laughs> so <laughs> i totally i totally uh get the officer thing and uh I have some pretty funny officer stories. I'm not really sure how some of those officers actually get into the positions that they do. Holy hell. Um, thank God, you know, uh, unless it we're there to, to help make sure that the job got done and um, that everybody understood what the mission was and got the work completed. Cause man, I remember one, one lady came in and she, she like literally walked up. Uh, to, I think he, I think he was a commander or captain, which in the Navy is like 05, 06. She grabbed his collar device and was like, oh, these are so cute. And then she like grabbed hold of his, where can I get these? Like, where did you buy these? I want to get some for my uniform. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I can't believe you just did that. And I just, uh, I had many officers, you know, they always say the enlisted kind of help teach the officers. And that's true. Um, I had my fair share of junior officers that I had to, to put in their place. And uh, yeah, just some really funny stories. And I've had officers come back and be like, you know, I'm so sorry. I was acting like a total idiot. And I'm like, yeah, you were. <laughs> so, just like, don't do it again. And they're like, thank you so much for your guidance, your leadership. I'm like, no problem. Just don't do that shit again. 23 meds. Holy shit. Yeah, somebody was on here a couple weeks ago and they said, they said about the same. I want to say it was like 20 or 30. I mean, who how, who the hell has time to take 23 medications? And who knows what they're all doing, you know, overlapping with each other. Are they, you know, counteracting each other? I don't even know how you would write prescriptions and understand, like, what would affect the other one or if they all, I mean, that's crazy. That's crazy to do that. There's no reason for that. Corporals run the Marine Corps. That's right. That's right, they do. 500 milligrams of, oh, wow. You know, I I wasn't on a whole lot of medication, but I remember when I first came back, um, my very first appointment to check, check back in with the VA, they like shoved this medication, like huge thing about, I was like, I'm not taking that. I'm not gonna take that. And they're like, well, don't you wanna feel better? And I'm like, I don't need that. Yeah, it will kill your liver because your liver has to filter all of that. So, it, and it also messes up um, your natural chemicals going on in your brain as well. It will strip them and affect their levels uh, permanently. That is actually one reason I was like, I have to get off this. I have to get off this because it's permanently going to affect my brain if I don't. And I think I was on it for maybe seven years. I was on a couple different medications. Uh, it made me gain a ton of weight. I was a zombie. I remember meeting um, a guy we dated for about three years. I had just gone on medication when we met and I was like chill all the time. Nothing ever bothered me. And once I made the decision to like start coming off, he's like, what the hell happened? Like, I'm like, I got my personality back now. I'm not putting up with your shit anymore. So, <laughs> you know, either straighten up or get out. He's like, you're not the same. I'm like, because I'm not a zombie anymore. This, this is me. <laughs> this is like my true self. And we lose ourselves in medication. I've even written a song about it, you know, called The Weight of Heaven about, you know, the chorus is, you know, swallow that pill. It'll make it go away. And that is their cure because it's an easy fix for them to do. They don't actually have to do any work. All they have to do is write a prescription. Here you go. 
here's your prescription. Oh yeah. My therapist, my VA therapist actually told me, she's like, you need to go get your med card. I'm like, are you telling me to go smoke pot? And she's like, yes, I am. <laughs> and it works. It helps. I mean, it, it's natural. It's a plant. You know what I mean? Uh, there's no reason that you shouldn't be able to use a natural plant versus something made in a laboratory, you know, and all these pharmaceutical companies, they're making bank off, off, off of all of us being fucked up. They are billionaires and trillionaires because of the epidemic of medication in this country. And it's absolutely ridiculous. It, it makes me sick. There's this uh, there's a family, and I can't I remember what their name is. They're one of the bigger medication companies. But their business plan, they found proof and documentation. Their business plan was to get America hooked on opiates. And then part of the business plan, get a bunch of people hooked on it, and then create something that's going to fix it. And from that, they made billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars. And I remember when my son got burned really uh, severely, they were trying to give him um, what is that drug that's so it's uh, over the counter? Hey, Dean, what's up? Um, it's so addictive. What the heck is that? It's not fentanyl. It's um, I can't remember. Anyway, I begged the doctors not to give it to him because he was an addict. I was like, please, please don't give that to him. Please give him anything but that. And he actually, on his own, refused it. Oxy, yes, thank you. Um, he refused it and he actually suffered through the pain of getting severely burned on both sides because he didn't want to get addicted to that. And I have a friend, uh, very successful, was like the head hygienist, had beautiful children, beautiful families. She got in a car accident, gave her Oxy. Her life seven years later is still fucked up. She lost everything. She lost her children. She lost her job. She lost everything. And that was this company's business plan to get America hooked to make money. And unfortunately, the VA, uh, whether they know it or not, is, is a part of that business plan of those companies to medicate us to death. And sometimes I think it's to medicate us so we shut up and we don't talk. Because I even have Vietnam friends that are riddled with cancer from Agent Orange and a VA rep actually told her, told him after he had been waiting for years to get something done. You know what? You're probably going to be dead by the time that you get approved for your benefits anyway. Like, that's how callous she was. <laughs> yeah, some George Soros kind of stuff, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's sad. And that's why I made the decision to go all natural. And, you know, a lot of people think it's hippie shit but it's actual just science. Um, I'm kind of a science geek and there's a lot of science to back up why holistic healthcare works. And it was working before we had these medications, right? It's not a cure for everything, obviously. Obviously there are some modern day medical procedures and, and medications that we need for various things, but it can help with a lot. And it has been for thousands and thousands of years. And there's, there's no reason that current medicine should not be incorporating that. In fact, I took a Cudinamisa class when I was uh, at the University of New Mexico with the Dean of Students. And uh, they taught us with the medical model that's used in Mexico, where the healers come in to the medical school and they work right alongside the medical students because they want to use both sides. They, their holistic care is they treat the mind and body at the same time. The people who swear to take care of us are actually trying to kill us. Whether they're doing it intentional or not, I cannot say. Um, whether some of them don't give a shit, I can say no, they don't give a shit. Um, where some of them are just mindlessly going through the motions of what they're told to do in the VA or any other government agency having worked for the federal government. Um, they just want to keep their job they just want to keep that paycheck coming in and not ask questions and that's actually why um after the military i had a federal job i actually left my federal job because i was like i i can't continue to operate in this fashion where you guys have actual no procedure for anything you just wing everything and i'm like i have questions you guys don't ever ask questions things are going on here that are not right 
and, and I'm not the only one. I have several friends that have quit their federal jobs because they question like, this is not right. Why is this happening? Why are you not doing, why are you just looking the other way when the shit happens? And so I quit and I started refusing to sign paperwork. I was like, I'm not putting my name on this stuff. And they're like, we well, have to. I'm like, no, I don't. I don't actually. And so um, I've butted heads with many different agencies. But here's the thing. I don't want to continue to butt heads because that's not going to get me anywhere, right? Dean, I was an addict twice, almost died once. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're still here, Dean. I, I really, really am glad you're still here. Um, we're all glad you're here. We're all glad that we're all here, right? Because uh, I've been in those dark moments myself. I wasn't an addict, but I sure as hell almost had many moments where I almost picked up my gun and ended it. But I'm glad that none of us did and that we're, that we're all still here. But here's the thing. Yes, there's problems. Yes, there's issues. But nothing's ever going to get resolved if we as veterans don't step up and help them make the change. Are they doing things that we don't like? Yes. Are some of them complete assholes? Absolutely. But if we step in and be like, we need a change, we want to make a change, let us help you see the right and correct way to do this, maybe they will listen. And one of the ways to do that, as one of my friends, Eli Crane in Arizona, is actually now running for Congress. He's a retired Navy SEAL, owns Bottle Breacher Company. Um, more veterans need to be running for office, whether that is at the town level, the state level, the national level. More veterans need to be in leadership positions because think about everything that we were able to accomplish while we we're in the military doing teamwork. Imagine what we can do if more of us started running for these different positions as, as senators and congressmen and mayors and city councilmen, imagine the impact that we could have. It could be huge and things could actually start changing. You could start making a change. And that is my whole life right now is I'm getting ready to do this research study so that I have ammo to take to the VA, be like, you're doing it wrong. This is why this is not working because you're doing it wrong. And luckily I have um, big researchers behind me. I have access to Congress members that hopefully I'll be able to speak to and demonstrate uh, things with, but I'm not, you know, a lot of us vets, um, I think we get into Congress and we just don't hold back. It's like, you know, if we're going to talk, let's talk. There's no bullshit. There's no politically correct and, and formal. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Let's sit down and let's talk and let's make a change, you know, and I've actually considered, you know, after I get done with this research study and I've considered actually running for Congress myself because I'm tired of this shit happening. And I really think that if more veterans stepped up there, there would be a change and they, their hand would be forced. If we all sat around in Congress or in Senate, these Senate hearings that were really frank with each other and stopped arguing and stopped having these big drama shows and, big crybaby moments of, you know, and worrying about, am I right all the time? You know, have a conversation with somebody. Maybe you'll learn something. You don't have to agree with them on everything, but maybe you'll learn something. Maybe you'll teach them something. So that's my challenge to you all is, you know, step up, stand up for yourself, stand up for other vets. Let's make a change together because together we can, we can move mountains, man absolute mountains and I believe and all veterans out there have that ability and capability and when you have purpose as Mr. George the owner of the radio station says he's always like if you have purpose and I agree you can get through a lot and you can change your life so find what your purpose is maybe today your purpose is just getting through the day or getting healthy or taking care of your family um, maybe it's a bigger goal of getting a degree or running for Congress. Um, whatever it is, like figure it out and, and work your way to it, even if it's like baby steps. You know, go back to what you know to to have a successful outcome. Go back to your military training and use that. Train for what you want to do. Set your goal and train for it every goddamn day until you finish it. And don't ever give up. We need more vets in the VA management apps. Yeah, we do.
Dean's saying, get rid of the ger geriatric attorneys that are warming. You know, I don't, I really don't understand why people are there until they're in their seventies or eighties. Like what the fuck is that? Like you don't have something better to do. You guys are all fucking millionaires. Go out and goddamn live in Florida or Bahamas or something and like live life, retire. You know what it is? It's a power issue. They don't want to let go of that power because that power is addictive. And there has to be term limits in Congress. That's how that was set up is that nobody was supposed to be there for 30 or 40 years. You're supposed to be there for like four, eight, maybe 12, maybe. That would be pushing it. There's absolutely no reason for somebody to be there that long. They just don't want to give up power because they're power hungry and money hungry. And we all know that they use their positions to better their own lifestyles. I don't care how good they look on paper. I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat. They all do it. Every last one of them. And there's a high level of corruption in our government right now. And like I said, it needs to change by good, honest people, by veterans. Neen, it's easy money and lobbyists have a ton of it. Yep, they do. They, they absolutely do. Uh, it's whoever has the most money gets shit done. That, that is absolutely how it is. And it's not how it should be. That's not where our country was founded on. That's not why we all signed on the dotted line to protect our country's rights. So uh, I'm thankful that I'm seeing more veterans step up into uh, different positions. Like I said, no matter what level they are, uh, I'm proud that they're doing that. And who knows, maybe a... Uh, Maybe someday I'll be doing it myself. I don't know. I am in Florida right now. I know DeSantos is a huge favorite of some friends of mine. I really don't know that much about him, um, but very well educated. Um, seems like a pretty good guy. Seems like he has a pretty good level head. Uh, Dan Crenshaw, um, I'm a fan of because he doesn't take sides. When you when you, He'll call a Republican out and he'll call a Democrat out. And he speaks logically and he speaks like a leader in the military would. And that's why I like him. And he kind of won me over when he went on Saturday Night Live after uh, Pete, what's his name? I can't remember, uh, had made fun of him about his eye patch. And I'll give Pete credit. He actually didn't know what the eye patch was or even who this guy was. I just basically said, just give him a, just, you know, make fun of this guy. He's like, okay. But Crenshaw was like so cool. He came on Saturday Night Live and, you know, gave him a hard time, but he didn't get mad. You know, that's the kind of composure that we need. DeSantos is the country's governor. Yeah. So um, I know that Australia, I don't remember if it was last year, or the year before, they fired everybody. <laughs> it's when they were like, everybody is fired in their government positions and they start up from scratch and although that may be absolutely chaotic for a while it might not be a bad idea my friend kurt swab is running for governor of texas air force vet oh nice i haven't heard of him see need more veterans um like i said we don't all have to agree we don't have to be republican we don't have to be democrat but the one thing that we can agree on is that this country needs some good leadership and right now our leadership sucks <laughs> It sucks on both Republican and Democrat side. I get tired of purpose getting lost in uh, temper tantrums that I see in Senate hearings um, of corruption that's going on on all sides. They're just losing focus of why they're there. And, you know, like uh, Chris, Chris was on, Chris Turner was on a couple of weeks ago, and he's like, all I want is for people to do their damn jobs. That's it. We've elected you to do a job, so fucking do it. Stop being a damn, goddamn crybaby about it. You, ha you have a job to do. You're only there for a couple of years, hopefully only for a couple of years. You know, dig in your heels and, and try to make a difference. Otherwise, why are you there? Are you there to get famous? Are you there to get the retirement? Because they all get a retirement. Even if you only do four years, you get a lifetime retirement. Why did you run in the first place? And why are people with so much money usually the ones in those positions? This should be the average American. Because the average American is the one that can speak to what daily life looks like for most of America. Leadership is going to suck when you pick the crazy patients and the dimension. <laughs> it's true. You know, it, it's, the, it's the money game again. Who has the most money for their campaigns and to, to look pretty and get the word out about that they're running. Uh, it's, 
you know, you see, you see it start even in like high school, you know, people running for student body. Who's the most popular? Well, usually the most popular is the kids that have the most money. That unfortunately continues on into adulthood into very important decisions. These people make decisions that affect our daily lives. They make decisions that affect our children and our children's future. So why are we not holding them more accountable? Why are we not stepping up more and running for offices ourselves to, to boot them out and get people in there that are actually going to care about the average American and what they go through and what they continue to go through? You know, just this last year, it's been rough for everybody. And you kind of hope that these kind of events pull people together, but it seems to just make them even more divisive. And that makes me really, really sad because even looking from a scientific standpoint, um, the more people that are coming together, the more positivity, the more positive outcome is going to come from that. And even though we all make jokes about how the military is run and if the military were a business, it would probably go out of business. The teamwork aspect, the unity aspect is something that works. And that model needs to be translated over, not into just government, but I think corporate structure as well, because we have a lot of big corporations that don't understand what the average American goes through. They're just in it to make money. And so I think if more people had that mindset of we need to pull together, because of course you're going to get a lot more done, you know, you got like two people doing something versus 10 people doing something, you know, let's look at the equation, which is going to get more work done positively or negatively. So the more people that come together, that do not divide, we come together, even if you're a Republican and I'm a Democrat, or even if I'm a Republican and you're a Democrat, I don't give a shit. What I do give a shit about is you and your family and um, this beautiful country that we have. So we have to find ways to come together and work together and get over our differences. And I really kind of almost wish there weren't different parties. I understand why there are. I understand checks and balances and all that stuff. But sometimes I just wish there was one party and that party was Americans. Because as Americans, we have a really beautiful thing going. Uh, we have a great history. And even though we're a young country, we're an awesome country. Are we where we were before? No, but we can absolutely get back there again. This is why people risk their lives. They get in inner tubes and risk getting eaten by sharks or drowning to come to our country. They are coming illegally over the borders to get into our country because they know that America is a better place. And should they be coming over in a legal way? Yes, they should. But when you look at some of these countries, I was in military intelligence. The shit that I saw go on in some of those countries, especially in uh, Mexico, uh, Central and South America, I can't say that I wouldn't have freaking tried to do the same to save my family and my life. They still should be coming over legally. But again, as a human being, I, I understand that aspect because the things that I saw the cartels do made ISIS look like kindergartners. Um, there's so much hate and so much cruelty in the world. America is a shining light for people to come. And we just need to get back to, like you said, you know, cohesion. We, we need to be united. United States. That's purpose of the name. That's a whole, you know, uh, mantra is that we need to unite and no more of this division. Just like, let's get over it and uh, do something good for somebody. I've had a really great discussion, even though I've been talking most time. We had a, amazing comments from you guys. Thank you, guys. Um, I'm going to look more into DeSantos now that I'm here. Some friends of mine are really, really big into him. Um, since now I'll be able to legally vote in Florida. But uh, I had a great time here in Florida so far. I basically hung out by the lake and had coffee with the cranes, went to the beach, napped by the ocean, went and had great seafood and, and great music. This weekend I'm going to a really awesome birthday party uh, with my Tampa crew. And um, yeah, life is good. It's a slow pace here. That's I missed being by the ocean, being in the Navy for so long. 
Uh, I love the pace. I love the vibe. And I uh, don't forever want to be in an RV park. Eventually, I want to get some land and stuff like that. But for now, it's uh, it's a pretty chill life. And the dogs hang out, and I write during the day and, and teach yoga, and it's uh, it's been a good time. But Don Burgess, U.S. is the last free country. Yeah, there's there's a lot of truth to that. There's a lot of truth to that. And we as veterans, like I said, step up, step up, find your purpose. If you're dealing with issues, um, we're all here to help. Uh, keep getting on Vet Radio Syndicate. We have shows going all week that you can get on the talk. We're always here to keep you company and to talk and give you resources. Uh, please uh, email the, the station. We'll be more than happy to help. But, you know, once you get over your obstacles of mental health, which are absolutely um, something that you can do and you can succeed in, start thinking about what your bigger purpose is um, and uh, go after it. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do it because you can do whatever the hell you feel like you can do. Um, one of my business crushes, Gary V, said, you can go ahead and listen to what people say about what you should and shouldn't do, but then go and do whatever the fuck you want to do in the first place. So that's kind of been my motto. But that's pretty much a wrap for tonight. I have um, reached the point where the bar is about to come on in about 10 minutes. So if you want to stick on, you can um, go hang out with uh, Mini-Me at the bar. He's got a great show going on tonight. And I will see you guys next week. Happy hour, 7 p.m. Eastern. If you drink, and if you drink, come drink with us here at VRS. I hope you guys have a great week and a great weekend.